Okay, you want to know why I had faith in the Cats film adaptation? It's because of this movie. I love this movie. I think it's awesome. Its director, Tom Hooper, would later go on to direct the Cats movie. He also directed The King's Speech. This director has some great movies under his belt. So that is why I had faith in Cats. It makes sense, right? Les Miserables, or Les Mis for short. And I'm talking about the 2012 version. There have been a couple different film adaptations of Les Mis, but the first version I saw of it, and the version I love, is the 2012 version. So Les Miserables is a film adaptation of the stage musical from the 1980s, which in turn is based off of a really old book that was published in like 1862 by Victor Hugo. And before I dive into the premise, yeah, you gotta know, not only is this a musical, but it's completely sung through, it's operatic, it's a very grand story. Les Miserables is an odyssey that's spans about 20 years. It takes place way back in the 1800s in France during a French Revolution. And this movie really makes you feel like you are there, and that's what I really love about it. Before I dive into the characters, I have to touch on this. Because this is like one of the best film adaptations of a stage musical I have ever seen. Because yeah, it's a stage musical that takes place in the 1800s, and this movie makes you feel like you are in that time. The set design is very grand. The costume design is on point. Everyone's dressed like British and French soldiers. You can tell the filmmakers were like, no, we're not going to half-ass anything. If we're gonna tell the story of Les Miserables, then we are going to tell it to its fullest and tell the best version of the story that we possibly can. You'd be surprised how much that adds to the immersive quality of a movie. Because I'm not a history buff. I don't really care about what happened in France in the 1800s. So how did this story make me care about it? Well, it gave me some great music and some really relatable characters. And sweet cinematography too. And when I call Les Mis an odyssey, what I'm saying is that it's a story that's about quite a few different characters who are all important to the story. The main character is Jean Valjean, played by Hugh Jackman. He's just starting his parole, he's out of jail, but he is a decent human being. All he did was steal a loaf of bread to save his sister's son. Yeah, just for that, he was thrown in jail for 20 years. So he just got out and he's starting to reshape his life. He adopts a young girl named Cosette and raises her as his daughter. And then it jumps forward nine years where we get to the real meat of the story. And one of the biggest reasons I like this is that it's more a story about these characters than it is about this French Revolution. And all the actors in this movie are absolutely fantastic. Russell Crowe plays Javert. He's the British officer who is going after Jean Valjean. He's convinced, like, no, once a criminal, always a criminal, and I am going to put you back in jail. And a lot of people like to bash Russell Crowe's singing. I don't really see what's wrong with it. I think he sounds perfectly fine. In fact, he sounds very operatic. No, prisoner 24601! To me, anyway, he's not the worst voice in the movie. I mean, no one in this movie sounds bad at all. Anne Hathaway's in this movie. She's not in the movie that much, comparatively speaking. This movie's like two and a half hours long. She's in it for all of about 15 minutes. But my god, she is so good. Her scenes almost make me cry. They at least make me tear up. She won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for this movie and she was barely in it. That's how good she is. And when we get to the bulk of the story, we have Amanda Seyfried playing Cosette grown up. And look, it's not that she sounds bad in my opinion, but just to me, her vibrato took a lot of getting used to. For those of you who don't know, vibrato is when a voice goes like that, like it shakes. And my God, her vibrato is so fast. It sounds like inhuman. Just listen to her singing. It's, it's uncanny. I don't know what kind of vocal training she had. And again, she doesn't sound bad. It's just, it, threw me for a loop. I was like, whoa, okay, that's different. And there are a couple points in this movie where she hits a really high note and you're like, ooh, that's really high. Okay. But again, it doesn't sound bad. Cosette has this kind of romance story with Marius, who is a soldier fighting in this revolution. Marius is played by Eddie Redmayne. This is the first movie I saw Eddie Redmayne in, and it made me like him pretty much instantly. Because his character has that quality of, he's just a guy. He's no big, tough soldier. He's not a caricature, you know? He's a human being who is fighting for what he believes is right. He's just so relatable that way. So you easily root for Marius. But one of my favorite characters in the whole movie is Eponine, played by Samantha Barks. This movie is also the first thing I saw Samantha Barks in. Her character Eponine is a girl who's about Cosette's age. She has a crush on Marius. But, well, it's more than just a crush, really. She's pretty much full on in love with the guy. So it's one of those unrequited love things, which automatically makes me feel really bad for her because we've all been in this situation. Again, instantly relatable. Her song On My Own always makes me at least tear up. And she kills it too. Samantha Barks actually played Eponine in West End, which is England's Broadway, before she was cast in this movie. So it's a no-brainer that she crushes it as the character because this movie is not her first time playing her. This movie made me fall in love with Samantha Barks. I still want her to play Elphaba in the upcoming Wicked movie. And the reason for that is her performance in this movie. Just saying, she's great and I don't think she gets nearly enough credit. So now let's talk about the music of Les Miserables. The music in Les Mis is very operatic, like old school operatic. They sing like this because they're in an opera. So if you're not 
into that kind of stuff, then you probably won't be into this movie too much. It is very artsy, admittedly. You know, it's not for everyone. If you're into musicals, then you might like this movie. If you're not, then you will not. Me? If you know me, then you already know this. I love musicals. Yeah, and I also love superhero movies. Newsflash, you're allowed to love both. So as someone who loves musicals, I gotta say the music in this movie is completely awesome. There are a couple of songs from the original show that were left out of this movie, but I saw this movie before I saw the show. So it didn't bother me then, so it doesn't bother me now. And the show is completely awesome. I saw it last May. And this movie does the thing where some songs are not in the same place they are in the show, like one song on my own was moved to a different spot in this movie. So if you're a hardcore fan of a show, that might bother you. As much as I love Les Mis, there are musicals that I love more than it, so it doesn't really bother me. But the best thing about the music in this movie in particular is that they are not lip synced. You can tell whenever someone is singing on screen, they are singing live as they're filming. The way they did it is that all the actors had earpieces. They were hearing a piano that was being played off camera, and that gave the actors the creative freedom to sing the songs at their own speed. They could pause for dramatic effect. They could cry as much as was necessary, and it completely, completely adds to the dramatic, immersive effect of the film. And the orchestra was recorded and added in post-production. If you ask me, that's the best way to do it. Cause so many film adaptations of musicals these days, they go for the lip-syncing route. Like Greatest Showman, I complained about it in my review of that movie, is that all the songs in the movie were obviously lip-synced, and it sounded fake. Now if the movie is really good, then the lip-syncing doesn't bother me that much. But it will bother me at least a little bit. The fact that this movie doesn't do lip-syncing and actually had the actors sing live Live, it was just something I wasn't used to. And I think all film adaptations of musicals should do this from now on. I don't think they're going to, for whatever reason, I don't know why. But they totally should because it just makes it feel more real. Like, no, these people are actually singing in that moment. You never doubt it for a second, and that is just awesome. So in the end, Les Miserables is a fantastic movie for musical fans. Again, if you're not a fan of musicals, then you might not like this movie. It might bore you. But it's a grand tale of revolution and love and hope. Hope for a brighter tomorrow. Love conquers all. It doesn't sugarcoat anything either. It's a PG-13 movie, and so there is some violence in it. There are war scenes, people shooting guns at each other. There's a scene where someone is walking among a bunch of dead bodies, and there's pools of blood on the ground. Again, just makes it feel more real. Like, this is one of the realest feeling film adaptations of a stage musical I've ever seen. And that is what makes this movie stand out to me. All the acting is top-notch. The singing is great, for the most part. The cinematography, the set design. Again, you feel like you are there. And just how can that be a bad thing? I will always love this movie. It's one of the best movies of 2012, and that, my friends, is why I had faith in Cats. So, Les Miserables, have you seen this movie? What do you think about it? If you love it, what's your favorite song? Who's your favorite character? Have you seen the show? What do you think about it? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.